Now we have three different things. Propositions, which are claims about reality, which can be true or false. Sentence tokens, which are those physically written down or spoken out sentences. They're instances of sentence types. And sentence types, which are instanced by the sentence tokens. These are the things that different sentence tokens with the same exact word type in the same exact order have in common. Even though they're physically different sentence tokens, they can be the same kind of sentence. They can be the same sentence type. Now, logic is interested in propositions, but we said before that propositions can't be sentences. And I brought up the possibility in the last video that maybe that we said that just because we were confusing things. Maybe we were trying to identify propositions with sentence types when they really should be tokens or tokens when they should be types. So in this video, let's explore that. Let's see, is it the case that a proposition could be a sentence token or maybe a sentence type? First, in order to see things clearly, let's go through that scenario that Smith puts in the book. He says that imagine these four people are at Alan's house. Alan is hosting this lunch. Alan finally finishes making up the lunch and says, lunch is ready, who's hungry? Bob says, I'm hungry. Carol says, I'm hungry. And Dave says, I'm not. Well now, in this scenario, notice that Bob and Carol both made sentence tokens that are of the same sentence type. Now they're different sentence tokens, right? They're physically different things. Bob uh, vibrated the air molecules next to his mouth. Those are different air molecules physically than the ones that are vibrating out of Carol's mouth. But those two sentence tokens are the same exact type of sentence. They're the same types of words, the same exact order. So they share one thing in common even though they're totally physically different. The idea is here, a proposition is a claim about reality that could be true or false. What we're trying to see is could a proposition be identical to those sentence tokens, those physical things that are vibrating out of Bob and Carol's mouth, or could it be identical to the sentence type, right? That I'm hungry thing that they both have in common? Well, first let's check out the possibility that a proposition could be a sentence type. Again, Bob and Carol are using the exact same sentence type, which is I'm hungry right? Those word types, I'm and hungry, that are in that order. Now, is it possible that the proposition is identical to that sentence type? Well, since they're both using the exact same sentence type, if the proposition is identical to that sentence type, then they must be expressing the same proposition, right? But notice they're expressing two different propositions. Bob is expressing the claim that he, Bob, is hungry. Carol is expressing the claim that she herself, Carol, is hungry. Those are two different claims about reality, right? Therefore, they're two different propositions. But they're the exact same sentence type. So it can't be the case that the proposition is just identical to the sentence type. We have the same sentence type, but two different propositions. Now, you may have picked up on that tricky word there, I, right? That word I is a nasty word for philosophy of language. It's what's called an indexical. And indexicals get their meaning from either the context in which they're uttered or from something that you've said before, something like that. So when Bob says, I'm hungry, because of that indexical, it kind of changes the meaning of the proposition. You may think, well, why don't we just get rid of indexicals? Why don't we say that propositions are identical to sentence types that don't have indexicals in them? It doesn't matter where or when you said them, right? It doesn't matter the context of utterance. They're true at, uh, at any moment, at any place. That's an interesting idea. I think it'll be a lot harder to pull off than you think because most of the sentences that we say assume some kind of context in which you're saying them. So for example, if I say it's three foot and firing, when I say that, I, I am assuming a specific place in a specific time, right? I'm assuming, you know, at 12.05 on February the 2nd, 2019, uh, the waves at San Clemente Pier are three foot, uh, you know, like all, all these different things that I'm assuming if that was our plan, then we would be restricting the sentence types that could be propositions to, you know, very exact sentences. But let's say that we do that. There's still another problem. Imagine this scenario. Imagine now Carol looks over at Bob, right? And she sees that Bob is hungry, right? He's, he's amped about this. I don't know if they're having tacos, right? And he's ready to go. And she looks at Alan and she's like, well, Bob is hungry. And now let's say she remembers that Alan is taking Spanish class, right? So she sort of jestingly says, El Roberto tiene hambre. Um, I don't speak like that, by the way. El Roberto tiene hambre. Um, now I speak like Univision, right? So saying that, she's made two totally different sentence types, right? 
Bob is hungry, el Roberto tiene hambre. And they're totally different sentence types because they're made of totally different types of words. And yet they're expressing the same exact proposition, that proposition that this guy over here is a hungry guy. In fact, they're so different that if you were to translate the Spanish version into English, literally word for word, it would be the Robert has hunger, right? Which is a different type of sentence than Bob is hungry. So if a sentence type is just having the same types of words, right? The same exact words in the same exact order, then these are two totally different sentence types. And yet they're making the same claim about reality. They're expressing the same proposition. One proposition, but two totally different sentence types. It can't be the case that the proposition is identical to both sentence types, right? The sentence types would be identical to each other and we just saw that they're not. So a proposition must be different than a sentence type. So translations are kind of a monkey wrench in the whole idea that we could just really processify our, our sentence type and, and you know get rid of all indexicals. And as long as we have a very, very, very specific sentence type, it could be identical to a proposition. But you may say, well, okay, translations are a problem. Just pick one of the languages, right? Let's say just pick Spanish and we'll say that that sentence type in Spanish is identical to the proposition. Proposition is just that sentence type in Spanish. And then, you know, we can say that the English type is expressing that proposition. Uh, I think there are a couple of problems here. The first one being there's no non-arbitrary way to pick an L. I mean, we're just picking at random. And it seems like we're trying to figure out what a proposition really is, right? And if we're trying to do that, then we don't seem to just be able to pick willy-nilly, right? That, that that doesn't seem like reality works that way. A second possible problem here that has kind of an odd consequence. Let's say Dave doesn't speak Spanish and he looks over and he sees that Bob is hungry and he says Bob is hungry, right? So the claim being made here is that guy right there, you know, is, is a hungry guy. And let's say that we chose Spanish as our sentence type, el Roberto tiene hambre, that sentence type right there is identical to the proposition of this person over here is hungry, that claim about reality. That would mean when Dave says Bob is hungry, with that sentence token, he is expressing a proposition that is the sentence type, that Spanish sentence type, el Roberto tiene hambre, but he doesn't know what that means. In fact, let's say that, let's assume that he doesn't, he's not even aware that those words exist. How is it the case that with this English sentence type, he is expressing something that he's not even aware of? Seems like an odd consequence, so probably this isn't a good solution. You may think, ah, it must be the sentence token then. Well, unfortunately we have problems here too. So imagine the scenario, change it up just a little bit. Imagine Carol and Dave both turn and see Bob and he's all hyped, right? And they look at each other and go, Bob is hungry, same time, right? Now, these are two different sentence tokens. How do I know? They're two physically different things, right? One is these physically air molecules over here, and one are the air molecules vibrating over here. And uh, if a proposition were identical to a sentence token, since these are two different sentence tokens, that would mean that we have two different propositions, right? But notice that they're making the exact same claim about reality. The claim being that that guy over there is a hungry guy. So we actually have one proposition. So two different sentence tokens but only one proposition, they can't be identical. Otherwise we'd have two propositions. So it looks like we can't have sentence tokens and propositions being identical. A proposition can't just be a sentence token. Now you may have a similar idea as we had before in the uh, the different languages. Uh, you might say, just pick one of them, right? Just pick one of the, the sentence tokens, make that the, pick Dave's. Let Dave's be the proposition. And then Carol is just expressing uh, that sentence token. Uh, unfortunately, we have some of the same problems. Pick one how, right? Just eeny, meeny, miny, mo. It seems like if we're saying a real identity, right? These two things are really the same thing. Then we don't get to just pick randomly. And the second problem being there's a, another totally wild consequence that let's say again, okay, let's say that Dave's sentence token is the proposition. It is the claim about reality. Well, that would mean that when Carol is expressing a, that claim about reality that Bob is hungry, right? When she's expressing that, she's expressing what? Dave's puff of air coming out of there, right? This physical sentence token coming out of his mouth? That's weird, right? That doesn't seem right. So it doesn't seem like a sentence token is identical to a proposition. A proposition is not a sentence token either. 
So a proposition isn't a sentence token, isn't a sentence type. What the heck is it? Well, the point of this section really is to show that the obvious answer isn't the right one. When we were first asked what is a proposition, it seemed obvious that it was just a sentence, but clearly it can't be a sentence type or a sentence token. It clearly can't be the sentence itself. Now, as we do logic, as we work with these propositions, we'll keep this in the back of our minds. You know, what exactly is it that we're working with? And hopefully by the end of our course, we'll have a better idea of exactly what a proposition is. But for now, we'll have to leave it at, we're not quite sure what a proposition is, but at least we know it's not what we initially thought it was. But if a proposition isn't identical to the sentence that expresses it, we may still have this question, well, how does the sentence express it then? But right? if they're not identical, then what's the relationship here? That we'll see in the next video. So for next time, please read section 1.2.2, pages 10 to 11.